All right, now let's talk about colors in HTML. So colors are used widely because when you're making things like buttons, uh, layouts here, maybe drop shadows and the like, or borders, you're going to need to use colors. Now there are three main ways to, de uh, to determine colors, actually four main ways. So the first one is what you see here. There are predefined colors like red uh, or tomato. Tomato is actually a color. If I refresh here, you see the difference with red. So there are quite a number of colors. You can just Google HTML colors and it will show you a list of available because like green is light green usually it becomes italic if it's recognized as a valid color like this now if you want to be more precise on how you deal with colors there are three ways to do so so you can do rgb you can use hls which is hue lightness and saturation or you can use the hex uh, my favorite way to do things but anyway, any of these is good. Uh, RGB is pretty straightforward. Hex is a little complicated, but let's see how things go. So let's start with RGB. So right here uh, from the beginning, if I want to change my background color to something using RGB, I'll type RGB like this and then put some brackets. And then in the brackets here, as you can see, I'm given spaces to write my value for the red, green, and blue, because how you mix these colors can determine what color you get. So if they're 0, 0, 0, that means black. So I expect to see a black color here. But then if, for example, uh, the maximum is 255. So if I type 255 on the red, then it means 100% red, 0% green, and 0% blue. So let's see that which should give us red. So I can also combine red, maybe 100 of uh, red, green, blue, of blue to give a weird color. There we go. That's the color I get, etc. etc. So a simple example I can uh, show here is uh, this so that you can see this in action. I've created a page called colors.html. Just a simple page with uh, two boxes and I've styled them, but I've added uh, some scripting language here, which you will not recognize if you are new to, uh, if you've never heard of JavaScript or you've never tried it. So what this code does here is just help me to display colors. When I, once I change uh, some sliders here, I get to see a specific color in the boxes that I've specified. So in order for, for us to see this, I want us to create just uh, a few links to that page. Since we know how to create a link, I can just do a tag like this. Uh, let's use the a tag here. Oops, what happened there? Okay, so a tag with an href. And I want this one to go to a page called colors.html. So this is just a page I've created, which is in the same folder as index.html. So it's colors.html. And we need to close this tag and tell it uh, go to colors, something like this. And then on the colors page itself, we can add um, something more. And uh, right at the end, maybe, I want to add go to home like this and this one will be index.html that way we can go back and forth between the two so if i refresh now there's go to colors right there and i can click let's see let me put it at a better place so it's right here it's part of this let me try and put it right at the end so it doesn't disturb the document flow so go to colors, click, and this is the page right here. So I have a few sliders here. This slider goes from zero to 255, same as this one, same as this one. This one represents red, green, and blue. So as I adjust, you see here it's maximum red. So if I reduce this, this is what you're going to see. 
until 000 is black. If I increase this 100% red, but then I can add some green to the whole thing and this is the color combination that we get. But if I add some blue, then we get to white. I can reduce this one and we get... So you, you get to combine colors like this until you get the color that you really want. And then you can use those numbers to in your project, right? Mm -hmm. Very cool. So simple and straightforward. Uh, where is this? Where? All right. So if we go back now, there's a, another uh, factor we can add to this. So go to home back here to see these colors. So you may want to make the color transparent because sometimes you have objects behind the, uh, the whatever thing you are coloring. So you may want an alpha channel. So alpha is transparency. So you do that by saying RGB and putting A at the end, which leaves space for the alpha channel. And so you can put comma. Now the alpha channel goes from zero to one. Okay, so one means maximum um, opacity. So it's opaque and you can see everything. But then zero means you can't see anything. So the color essentially disappears. As you can see here, it's completely transparent. Or you can do 0 0.5, which is 50% transparent. And there we go. Boom. Okay. So we can still see this in action by going here. I hope this works. Uh, I can reduce the alpha channel here. Oops, so something wrong with my code. I actually didn't try this. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working at all. Hmm, okay. Let me see the code here for a second. Give me a second. To look at the code 6789 RGBA. Ah, right, right, right. Looks too Well, it looks like uh, things are supposed to work here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's because I'm not referencing it here, so that should solve the problem. And we are golden. So refresh. And let's try again. So if I change the alpha, there we go. You can see the alpha disappearing there like this. Okay, so it's becoming more and more transparent. The color isn't changing, it's just transparent now. So if I do this, it's a more transparent color, more transparency, full opacity there, and so on. So as you can see, quite easy to see what's going on here. So. And that's how you can uh, change colors here. Now, another way to do this is instead of using RGB is to use the hex values. So, or let's try with hue, lightness and saturation. So here I'm just going to start with HLS like that. And it's exactly the same thing as you can see. So this one, the hue goes from zero to 360. So zero is red and then 360 is, uh, I don't know, is it blue or something? So saturation is how saturated the color is. This one is the lightness. So if I put this zero, it should give me red, I think. So let's go back to the home. And as you can see here, it is red. But let's change the hue to something like uh, maybe 100 degrees. And this is what we get. If you want to change the lightness, maybe I want it to be a bit darker, so 10% lightness, and there we go. Uh, we can change also the saturation, not too saturated, maybe 50%, until we get a color that we want. So it's very similar to uh, RGB, only that this time you're using the hue, and then lightness and saturation. So you can also add an alpha channel, of course, if I do this and put a one, I'll put an alpha channel there like this, maybe do uh, 0 0.5 as we did before. 
and if I refresh, there we go. So the same color now is simply just slightly transparent because if I put a one there to make it opaque, you see that it's still green. So that's a second way method of doing things. The other one is the hex value. So in the same way that we have RGB, uh, we also have hex, which just starts with a hash like this. So the way this one works is similar to RGB. So it's called zero, zero. So two numbers represent one value. So that zero, zero represents red, another zero, zero green, another zero, zero blue. Okay, as simple as that. The only uh, part where it gets complicated is the number, the maximum. The maximum is F. So it's FF, 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 like this. So the numbers go from zero to F. So you may be asking, how is this possible? Well, numbers go zero to nine, right? And that is best 10 because we have to shift back to uh, to one again. So instead we go to, uh, after nine, we go to A, then B, then C, then D, E, and then F. So F is like number 15. And then we go back to zero. So here, if I want maximum red, for example, I'll do FF because that's a maximum. And I want zero green, I'll do zero, zero. And maybe a bit of blue, so I'll do eight, eight because eight is half of 16, so it's a good number there. And if I now refresh, this is the value I get. So I can alter this, I can put to zero, zero, or maybe AA, and so on. Now, uh, with hex values, you can also put three numbers. Like maybe I want a gray, I want, I'll just put eight, 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 so if you put three numbers, it means each number represents one color, right? So if you put, you, so you can't put four numbers like this. this. This is invalid because it won't know which two numbers belong to which one. You can either put three or you can put six numbers like this and it will get two for each value or you can put three so that it gets one for each value. So whatever you want you can just adjust these numbers just know that the numbers go from zero to f so this one is for fine tuning the second number this one is the actual color and the other one is for fine tuning so you can experiment and see how they go now if you want to add an alpha you can as well if i refresh here this is the color we get but i can add two more numbers for my alpha here if i put zero zero this means it's completely transparent or I can put FF. This time the alpha also goes to F, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there we go. So if I want half transparent, I can put 88, something like this. Refresh, and there we go. Okay, so that's how it goes. Uh, so if you want to put the alpha, the numbers have to be 2, 2. You can't put those single digits and then put a, a fourth one for the alpha it's not going to work. You just have to do the full thing and put them like that. So here you can put FF like this and it works. So these are the ways that colors are done in HTML. So hex is pretty much RGB. This one is the one that's more different, but hex and RGB are the same. The only difference is one goes from zero to 255. The other one goes from zero to F and the hex has two numbers for fine tuning, for finer tuning detail, and the other one just has one number each. Okay, so great. I hope you have learned something about creating colors in uh, HTML. Now, regardless what you use, it doesn't really matter. You can use any of these. None is better. It's just a matter of preference. All right, so finally, we can do a practical project now and create our home page, our login page, which is this one. So I will see you in the next video.